on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. TikTok is cheap, but trends are forever. Just kidding, they're totally not. So if you want to capitalize on something fleeting, there's a new tool for you. Meta goes full pumpkin spice latte with a new basic ad offering. Yep, there's a new search engine in town. Oh. Yep. <laughs> on today's show. <laughs> Welcome, you are listening to Welcome. Marketing O'Clock. Just stay tuned. Digital marketing news, but let's get specific. Digital ads, SEO, and analytics. Social media and more. Pretty much everything that'll make your website perform. With new shows every Friday. Every Friday. We give you the news with sass and puns and definitely high takes. High takes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. you know what time it is. It's officially marketing o'clock. Settle in, sit back, keep it locked. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shop. I'm Jess Bud. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially marketing o'clock. Here on June 10th, 2022. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another fantastic episode. Greg Finn, what is going on in your world? Well, this weekend. My wife was asking, we, I don't know how it got to this, but we were talking to our kids. I have two seven-year-old twins. And we we're asking what people's favorite birds were. Ooh. Right? And so my wife asked the boy what his favorite bird was. <laughs> his answer. Like, I thought I had it down. I'm like, I, I know what this is, like 100%. And he goes, a chicken. <laughs> I'm like, a wow. Chicken? I thought he was going to say penguin. Right? And so I'm like, all right, well, that. That is a very, very strange answer. And then we ask the girl, and she goes, I don't know, probably a bald one. <laughs> I'm like, wait, there's more than one bald type of bird? Are there like bald birds out there? It's not like eagles, a, right? But they're not really bald. Why are they called that? It's good. I mean, it's white, white and everything else is, is dark. It's not bald. But it's like, I didn't know. Maybe there's a new category of just bald birds out there. Or did she mean like plucked? No, mm, she, like I think she meant skin bald birds. one like an eagle or something mm. like that. But anyway, that was something that got me thinking, like, are there other bald birds? We'll never know. Have you Googled it? We could no. know. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't ruin it for yourself. You'll have to report back. Well, I don't know if you guys know, but me and Jess Bud have the privilege <laughs> on my part of sharing a wall with our office. <laughs> and I think this was Friday. There's just something that's come over you lately. Like, I don't know what it is, but we were having a completely unrelated conversation in Slack and I got a message from her. Oh, no, it was Friday, of course. 11.09 a.m. No one's on a call, right? Pussycat Dolls Jam just came on. <laughs> And I kind of want to bump the jam. <laughs> like, first of all, I knew in the back of my mind, like, I think you've picked Pussycat Dolls for our playlist yes. before, playlist.marketingpodcast.com. But I'm like, what? Like, that just seems like the most unjust bud thing I've ever heard of in my life. And then I don't know what song I was expecting, but it was not the one I heard. It was I Hate This Part Right Here. So song that i like of theirs like it's what about buttons song. when i grow up like I, I wouldn't call i hate this part right here a jam i love <laughs> like, it i love it so much it's the so saddest good. one i was listening to my mellow mix anyway <laughs> is that also out of character yeah, yeah i don't know what person has a pussycat doll song on their mellow mix <laughs> just button <laughs> My definition of mellow might be slightly different than the normal population. Yeah. I just feel like you're going through something, but I'm liking it. <laughs> Thank you. What else is going on with you? Well, you may not have me pegged, Shep, but my son does. So <laughs> long-time listeners know that he picked me up, out as the goth individual in that book a long oh, yeah. time ago. So he just really knows <clears throat> his mother. We were out in the backyard last week, and he was just like looking at the gardens. And you know that like black fabric that like stuff, the weed barrier that yep. you put between yeah, yeah. the dirt and the mulch, there was like a piece of it sticking out in one of our gardens and Jack just goes, Mom, is that your underwear? <laughs> 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 I was like, no, son. It wasn't? It wasn't. Okay. <laughs> but just, I appreciate his, his perception of me. Oh, man. <laughs> Does he even recognize you when you wear those like every once in a while, the gray shirts that you have? 
Well, I wore a purple shirt to bed the other night. It's my Playboy sweatshirt, so I can't like wear it out. <laughs> and he goes, why are you wearing purple? I was like, it's bedtime. I don't have rules for pajamas. He is the best. He really, I love him. I love that. Yeah, Never you. changed, Jess. <laughs> Trying not to. Well, if this episode is out and you are listening to it, it means we have released our really long and amazing special episode. It is called Oops All Heck, and we are using it to raise money for the Buffalo 514 Survivors Fund. So you guys can head over to buffalo.marketingoclock.com to download the episode. You can make a donation as little as $1, and Cypress North is going to match your donation up to the aggregate of $5,000. So we're really hoping to raise some money for a good cause here. We had so much fun with so many friends of the show. It was a marathon to re- Cord. We played so many games. We talk about absolutely no marketing. Well, very little. <laughs> it was an accident. Yeah, it was totally an accident. Thanks, truly. But I really think you guys are all really going to enjoy it. So yeah, and some of those guests we got: Glenn Gabe, Andrea Cruz, Azim, Casey, Gillette, Barry Schwartz, Anu, Sarah Steeman, PPC Greg, Chris Ridley, Julie Bacini. It's two hours and like what five minutes? Fifteen, I think. Fifteen minutes. So it's yours. You can. You can get it for just one dollar. Bid as much or two dollars donation though, and it turns into a two dollar <laughs> donation, and you get the two hour show that is just all the shenanigans that we have when our show actually ends. And this is that special episode. Thank you so much, everybody. Just jumped right in and said, "I'm in." What do I need to do? It was awesome, and it's going to an amazing charity. Like Chep said, one hundred percent of the donations are going to those families, um, in forms of scholarships, everything that these people need from the senseless tragedy Um, and it's just awesome that the community jumped around it and we never ask you for anything and i'm asking for this even if it's a buck it will turn it into two bucks and we'll get it to the family so it's much appreciated buffalo.marketingoclock.com and it's two hours and 15 minutes of shenanigans with some of the best people in the biz check it out and don't miss smx (gasps) advanced you'll hear our very own shep zernheld talking about automation layering, Menachem Ani talking about automated bidding, Fred Valleys talking about RSAs. It is 100% free. And I'll be there with Andrea Cruz doing coffee talk in the morning on the second day. So you can hop in there. We're going to talk about what's going on good, bad, ugly in your accounts. Let's get everybody in here. We're going to have a party in this Google Meet. It's going to be that most uh, popular, <laughs> populated, I guess, <laughs> Um, one of these coffee talks. We'd love to have you. SMX Advance, free. Check it out. And don't forget, there is a new episode of Agency Scoop out with our CGO here at Cypress North, Jill Fetcher. She has a really fun one this month where she's sitting down with Barry Schwartz to talk about his agency, Rusty Brick. And I feel like we're always hearing about him with his blogging, but not really his agency. So I feel like I got to know him a lot better in this interview too. And did you notice that Jill has caught whatever disease you have and she's calling it Moe's? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. She calls it Moe's no. in the episode. No. I think she's joking because Barry didn't correct her. Yeah. She's just like in on the joke. But it's my favorite part. I think it came from Barry's tweet originally. Like, how do you pronounce yes. Maz? Is it Maz or Moe's? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite things. <laughs> but definitely check it out wherever you're listening to this, the agency scoop. What's happening in the news this week? All right. First up in the news, move over, Google. There's a new search engine in town. Yep, our friends over at Ahrefs are building a search engine with the hook that it will be giving 90% of its ad revenues to content creators. Yep, is the name of the search engine. And it's just yep.com. They have been doing this for a while. I'll get to that in a second. It's very clean. It's very reminiscent of like early 2000, maybe like 2000 and six or so where there's lots of links not a ton of ads i like the font even with it but according to a quote from dimitro jurisemko in TechCrunch, uh, who that he is the uh, ceo of hrefs he said let's say that the biggest search engine in the world makes one billion dollars a year now imagine if they gave 90 billion to content creators and publishers 
Wikipedia would probably earn a few billion dollars a year from its content. They'd be able to stop asking for donations <laughs> and start paying the people who polish their articles a decent salary. It's not wrong with mm -hmm. that. I just don't know how that's all going to work. And I went there. Can't wait to see. You, you can get there and you can, I think you can apply right there on Yep. He went on to say, creators who make search results possible deserve to receive payments for their work. We saw how YouTube's profit sharing model made the whole video making industry thrive. Splitting advertising profits 90-10 with content authors, we want to give a push towards treating talent fairly in the search industry. So, I mean, I love that thought from Dimitro, but that I also don't, that's 90-10 is a big split. 90 to creators? Like, that's unheard of. I mean, that's HRS for you there. Uh, and there's also, he, he had talked about this back. There's a tweet. His Twitter handle is at BotsBreeder. He tweeted back in 2021 in June that they're getting closer to publicly promoting the web search engine they're working on. It still looks very similar to what it looked like then, but apparently there has been being refined and, and, and upgraded over the past year. I like the results. The results are nice. Like in many cases, they're better than some of the other engines out there. So again, if you want to see what it's like, it seems to rely pretty heavy on title tags, which again is 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 I have no issue with. Um, and it's kind of a bit of a throwback. There was one thing I saw that was funny. I yepped <laughs> the term Google. <laughs> Ooh. And the first result was Wikipedia for Google. Love it. Love it. Second result was like cloud.google. Then it was another Wikipedia result. Same with Bing. First up, it actually brought Bing Crosby. Oh, that's my Bing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was Webmaster Tools and Places. So that was kind of strange. And I'm like, well, maybe there's like a, a big beef between all this. But it's not. One of the most insane things with this search engine is if you're doing a search, it can pull up and say, try searching on Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and other engines. And if you don't like the results in Yep, you can hit search on Google. It goes to Google for you, gets you off of that when uh, off of Yep, and kicks you over to Google with the search query appended to it, and you're just right on Google. What a nice guy! I know, like <laughs> this is actually like this is what people would want. If you don't like this, boom, shoot me over to a competitor. Great, like I I as a user would love that. That so, is wild. But are there Easter eggs? <laughs> You know what? The, yep. I have not found one yet, and that is a positive to me. So if wow. you're looking for another search engine or want to just check out what you look like, yep.com. It's only three characters before the .com. And from Andrew Hutchinson from Social Media Today, Meta is developing a new, quote, basic mm -hmm. ads product <clears throat> for Facebook to counter losses due to data privacy concerns. So Business Insider spoke to a couple of ad agencies who I guess are in the beta for this, and they told them Facebook is in the early stages of developing a product that wouldn't rely on any anonymized personal info from users. It is aimed at brand advertisers that are trying to build awareness and shape perception of products. It would be measured by basic metrics, including engagement and video views. I just think this is a lot like Greg's idea of the fancy restaurant that's so fancy that you can't dress up and you have to wear sweat. <laughs> They're trying to make it like uh, because they can't use data anymore and like their product just isn't what it used to be. Like we're just going to go the other way and make it like cheaper, no targeting at all. <laughs> Success is engagement and video views. The only thing they really failed at is the naming of this. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Well, maybe by the time they launch it, they'll come out with a better name. They should call it Extra Super Max Conversion yeah. Performance Dominance. We like can't the fit that on the sticker. <laughs> Smart ads. <laughs> Smart ads. I know. I actually appreciate that it's being called basic ads. I know yeah. that's not necessarily the name of it, but... I just think it's kind of sad that like it used to have the best targeting and now this is where we are, where basic ads is just like a trendy thing they're trying. It's a different product though. Yeah. So they're like not really admitting defeat, they're just offering you something new. <laughs> just a rebrand. <laughs> Maybe at the bottom it says try advertising on. It says basic. <laughs> she's taking a page out of Yap's book. What do you got for us, Jess? <clears throat> 
All right, TikTok has launched a new trends discovery tool. It looks really cool, but you have to have an ads account to fully explore it. So when I say it looks really cool, I'm relying on screenshots and the little bit that they do allow you to play with without an account, which is nice of them. So you can only see limited data, but you can go play with it. The gist of it is you can explore what's trending on the platform as far as hashtags, songs, creators, and even specific videos, which is cool. You can filter by location and some languages. I say some because it doesn't look like a lot, but I, I just assume that's because I'm not logged in. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, but I'm not really sure. But it's not just what is trending. You can dig into analytics for the trend as well, looking at the age range breakdown of the audience it's trending with, regional popularity, related interests to the thing that's trending. And then they have trend lines for the interest in said trending thing over time. And Greg, I just need to, folks are going to have to watch the video for this. I need your opinion on these charts. I mean, there's a clear winner. What is that It's not one? even about a winner. Look at the... Look what this chart looks like. Wait. I know, there's a clear winner. Interest in what, though? I'm dying to know. In the trending topic over time. So you click into something that's But do we know trending. what that first topic is? Because it was trendy and then it was nothing. Oh, was Sunday fun day was and that's the, the hashtag that's the for this. Because yeah. it's not only hashtag, that's a half pipe. If you're... Oh, if I you, thought it looked like a boat. Oh, no. It's that you're about yeah. to drop in. Tony Hawk's about to do uh, uh, 920. Is that what he did? Oh, it's a 920. That's how many degrees I think rotated. he was the first That's to do a 920, I think. I'll look it up. But I saw Sunday Funny. I'm like, that, boom. You know, Barry would know as well. But that is a half pipe there. Okay. That just, can't be true. A Sunday Funday never goes out of trend. Well, it does. And then this, I think these are days of the week here. <coughs> oh, cause so on Sunday, people care about Sunday Funday. Yeah, which makes sense. And Saturday, they're leaning into it I thought this was like Sunday Fundays throughout the centuries. No, well, throughout the, An <laughs> the <update>. centuries. <laughs> it was a 900. He did. That's still a lot of degrees. It's yes. really hot. A few um, more than Nick. We'll I just. <laughs> <laughs> I like them too, Chef. Um, it, but my gripe with it is the trend line just like disappears. I don't like the fade out. Anyway. I agree. It's a cool tool for good marketers looking to actually leverage TikTok. It's great insights. For, if you're trying to reach your audience and you want to see what's resonating with your audience, it's a good tool to dig into. So. Definitely recommend checking it out. I mean, you can sign up for an ad account just to get in there. I didn't see anything about having to actually spend in order to see the insights. So life hack there for you. All right. Next up, Apple Search is shifting to a cost per tap pricing model. Bum, bum, bum. This actually, they, I think it was Tuesday or no, maybe Monday of this week, whatever it was, the WWDC events from Apple came out lots of announcements there was nothing that tim apple said about a search engine like we thought might be happening there are a bunch of other events this year but the cost per tap pricing model makes a lot of sense because it puts advertisers in perspective of like what they're typically paying from the current search landscape. So before everything was CPM based or cost per mille, cost per thousand. And now this is going to go to a cost per tap, basically. So I, I like but they that. mean click? Yes. In our so world. Say the same brand. But I mean, right now it's mobile app based. So the tap makes sense. You're not necessarily clicking. They, I, I would imagine that the majority of any interactions are taps so that makes sense and i, I kind of like how it's a little bit different there but you, it, it puts you in the same mindset if you're currently spending a lot of money to to potentially if it does come out easily pour it over to the apple search engine so you could choose the maximum amount you're willing to pay each time somebody clicks or taps your ad and then you're charged based on what your nearest competitor is willing to pay for a tap on their ad so again this makes all the sense in the world if you're going to have your own search engine. You heard it here first, folks. Did we hear it here first? <laughs> no, you heard from Robert Scoville like two weeks ago. And this week, LinkedIn also announced the launch of Business Manager. This is, quote, a centralized platform designed to make it easier for large companies and agencies to manage people, ad accounts, and business pages. So it seems like this is a lot like Facebook Business Manager where you can log in and access all of the different pages and ad accounts and manage the users from your company. It's going to be really great for agencies. Why does everyone use the same names? 
I mean, I know it is a business manager, but like it just gives me PTSD for how bad Facebook business manager is and how impossible it is to navigate. I, I spent, clocked it, 17 minutes trying to add someone to our account today. Oh my gosh. It's stupid. So hopefully this works better than that. We There's can actually manage things. be a things. better way. Yeah. And I realized today BM is the acronym, which I kind of love. Oh. It's kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> That's crappy. And some of the highlights include you can view and manage teams, ad accounts, pages, and business partners from a centralized dashboard. It's going to be easier to manage and control admin tasks like permissions and billing, and you'll have the ability to share and update matched audiences across ad accounts. It's interesting that that's like one of the first things you're doing because I feel like it's the last thing I would do. <laughs> Everyone's rolled this out recently and like it makes sense if you're a big company and you have an MCC account for all like different regions or something. But for an agency, that's just scary that you're going to like apply the audience from one client to another. That it, would, it really is. Yeah. Like it should be harder to do that in my opinion. I uh, agree. All right, you heard it here first again, Finstradamus. This is going to be rolled back. The whole, oh, the, the audience whole thing? thing? <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Hmm. Across for everyone agencies. or just, no, just LinkedIn? Yeah. I think you'd have to say that it, there's too much possibility of sharing first party data. It does, it, you should have an agency business manager account and then a basically a corporate mm -hmm. one. That's a good idea. So. And it's just weird that it's come up in the last couple of years as everyone's talking about privacy all the time. It's like people aren't, are, are people asking for this? I don't know. It's, it's like that's the last thing you want is anything shared within something that an agency is touching. Like budget, anything. You anything. never, ever, ever want that other than maybe like a column setting in Google Ads or something. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Finn Stradamus, write it down. We should do a year in review thing for that at the Clockskers, like if any of your Finn Stradamus mm. predictions. You know what? That's a be. great idea. I already have the answers. It's 100%. <laughs> I thought you were going to predict that we forget to do it. Oh, oh that's <laughs> correct too. <laughs> Just but <Stradamus>. Stradamus. <laughs> And there is no official date um, for the launch of this, but it's apparently coming in the uh, next few weeks. I don't know what the URL is going to be or where we're going to find it. Couldn't find that in there. But business.linkedin.com. Is it that what it is now for LinkedIn ads, though? Oh, I don't know. That's what Facebook business, or excuse me, Meta, Meta business manager is. No joke. I think whenever I have to get to LinkedIn ads, I Google LinkedIn ads. <gasps> me too. Yeah. You see that lady with the messed <laughs> the up hair. hair in the stock photo? That poor lady for years. I hope she's doing better. <laughs> Now it's time for this week's take of the week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. All right. This week's take of the week comes from Boris Beckerak at Boris Beckerak on Twitter. And he's got a meme, a man after my own heart. He says, it's, it's again, I think this is a top Top 20 meme, I would say. It's the meme where you've got the car going down the highway and that swerves off the road. And in this case, the car is Google. And the road that it was on is the road of data, insights, search queries, transparency. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it swerves off the road to performance max. I have a bone to pick with this meme. <laughs> I hope this meme never goes anywhere. It says it's a left exit. Someone needs to redo this meme. It's what not Boris's mean? fault, but it says it's a left exit, That's but the exit's really on the right. That's really weird. This road sign's incorrect. Oh it's also my right. my gosh. It's also Did you <laughs> just ruin a meme I'm for everybody? <laughs> Maybe that's why the car is so confused and has to go off at the last oh. minute, though. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Boris. <laughs> now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. I see why am I, people. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. I see why am I, people. Sean Ellie had a tweet this week that really makes you think, I think. <laughs> <laughs> These are my favorite kind of I see why am I's. I will be reading this word for word. I had a little time to prep today. Here we go. 
Quick rant, I have been struggling in some accounts to get search volume. Keywords I know have search volume aren't driving impressions. I added broad keywords to try to jumpstart the ad groups. The query matching those are indeed very broad and may have zero interest in my ad. Next tweet. The users that do click will have to navigate around the site to actually find the info or product they're looking for as my landing pages are tied closely to the keyword. You know, old best practices. So my real question is, what happened to Google being all about user experience? That is so true. It's like you're all about finding the best result user experience. Unless someone is paying and then you're just going to do whatever you can to match the query to a broad match keyword and have the person click so they get charged for it. Oh, and you have an ETA in that in that ad group? Oh, you're out of there. Never seeing the light of day. Yeah. <laughs> really makes you think. Now it's time for this week's pew pew lightning round. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. First up in the paid universe, we have an article from Greg Finn for Search Engine Land. Are you just working there full time now? No, it's from uh, the first, so nine days ago. Oh, well, you seem to be spending a lot of time there. I'm helping out as needed. There's a new uh, writer on the paid side of things, Nicole Farley. Oh, she was yes. one of my other articles. Yes, great she, read. Very, great read. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, way to heck on Greg there. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? She has big shoes to fill is all I'm saying, but it was good. Mm-hmm. I'm it's happy for nice you. Nice recovery. <laughs> I hope you can get some more sleep just in time for the NBA playoffs, you know? Um, it's the finals and it's game oh. three. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, Google Merchant Center announced some changes. So first they added a pause attribute that you can use to temporarily halt ads without using out of stock or availability attributes. They also announced a change in policy for how motor powered bicycles are listed. You guys, <laughs> so specific. this article, like, first of all, I want to understand, and I'm sure Greg will tell me, but like my brain, I just feel like such a nerd reading this. It's like electric bikes of a speed of 25 <laughs> kilometers per hour or less are still allowed. Like, what? I actually didn't write that part. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's from Google. That's like from the document. Yeah, somebody, uh, Danny Goodwin must have updated my article. But like how nerdy. Like why does Google care how fast mm. it goes? Because it's then in like a motorcycle category. <laughs> And all it made me think about was how we've got to do something here in Buffalo about getting the dirt bikes off the roads. I want to do something about getting me into the motorcycle category. I have yet to experience such a ride. You've never been on a motorcycle? Never. It's my bucket list to ride through the desert for just a mile with no helmet. Just feel that. We need to get that to happen. Just wear a helmet. No. Just for a mile in the desert. No roadkill. Just a straight shot. your helmet campaign. I know, but she needs to feel alive. (laughs) More on that later. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that sound fun? Just for a mile. And then I'll wear a helmet. Helmets keep you alive. Okay? Team helmet. Um, true. You wear a helmet. Same, but for a mile. For a mile. Desert. Just think about it. Don't tell yeah, me. When you're, when you're 90. <laughs> I want to do it now so I could tell my grandkids not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can still do that when you're 90. They're going to be alive. <laughs> like You're the one that might be dead. <laughs> not them. Ah, oh, fine. It's just a dream anyway. It'll happen. Thank you, Greg. Snapchat has a new uh, product for your trip. Oh. Dynamic travel ads. <laughs> you could get on your bike and travel to the Iris Inn. Doesn't that look nice? $155 a night from Booking.com? I well, want to go there. It does look that's nice. That's a house. Yeah. That's not an inn. That's it's a house. probably a lovely, charming bed and breakfast. It's not an inn. That's a house. You can go in it. Okay. Well, these this is like a new campaign ad unit type thing. It says these match offers from a business is a business's product catalog to serve travel destinations relevant to each user based on places they've visited and products they've viewed. So it's kind of a dynamic remarketing situation for travel. And I want to check out the Iverson is all I'm saying. And wear your helmet. Okay, Seth Miller got an interesting notification from Apple this week. I'm so confused about this. So first of all, it looks like he's on his computer. Yes. Yes. And it says personalized ads. 
And then it's, of course, this whole spiel that I'll skim about how amazing personalized ads are. Um, so oh, almost like you're going to make your own search engine. Yeah, <gasps> they run in the App Store and Apple News. They help you discover apps, products, and services that are relevant to you. Like, we love ads, but we took down the whole ecosystem. <laughs> like, yeah. Does it say that? No, Seth did. Seth said that. He said the audacity after (laughs) decimating an entire economy. (laughs) But it's like you made literal commercials that were plastered everywhere. They were showing the privacy of Apple products and how you could opt out of everything. And now your big thing is like, oh, you know what? Now, now. Now, Mm. personalized ads are Your secret's safe with Apple, though, is what they're saying. What they're saying. It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Advertisers are seeing a new beta in their Google Ads accounts called quote automatically created assets. This was reported from Barry Schwartz and also me a couple months ago before I got in trouble. Didn't know if I was supposed to tweet about it and took the tweet down. <laughs> not before PPC Greg saw it. <laughs> but these If you have them turned on, it says, use the content from my landing page domain and ads in combination with assets I provide. Customize assets based on relevance for my keywords. So it sounds like the new ad suggestions to me. I don't know. I'd be careful with this, but I mean, all the new automated features Google Ads is releasing, it seems like they really want them to work, so it might be worth a test, but ad suggestions are scary and it's kind of what it sounds like. Um, but I saw it in my account at the campaign level, so it seems like something that you could do a small test for. You don't have to turn it on for the whole account, but just be aware of that. Kirk Williams. A curious, <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> His books in front of us stop the scale, but harking back to a previous publication, a curious thing to ponder about PPC moving forward is that we're all learning how to play with Google's algorithms more than we're actually doing marketing. I don't see that as healthy long-term for the industry and keeps Google endlessly holding the cards. For example, he says Pmax is a good example of this. How should we think about how audiences relate to our assets and then how that should guide our future asset creation? That's what the marketers are thinking. And then Google says, you don't need to see or know that. Just give us all your audiences and all your assets and we'll do it. Oh, but you're responsible for uploading the audiences. Mm Mm-hmm but you don't know what they're doing, if anything. Really makes you think. We've got a lot of ponderings today. Hmm. Oh, and he made a meme. I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) It's the most important part. He used um, Greg's favorite movie, Star Trek. (laughs) We have Mr. Anakin Anakin, in his rat tail face. Jess, you should have a rat tail. Oh, you look so great. Do you think Jack would be into that? He would. I should do it to him. My little lady had a naturally occurring rat tail for a while, but I had to snip it off. It was just too much for me. My little girl had the um, the crib hat, bat hat. What is mm-hmm. it called? Oh crib, yeah, crib crown, cradle, cradle, cradle cap, crown, care, whatever. Mm-hmm. But she looked like a literal Peaky Blinder, <laughs> and so her nickname was Peaky for a long time. Oh, that's so sweet. Rather now than the squeaky. girl, what? <laughs> the girl. Taller the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Um, So Anakin says, visual assets and audience matching are the future of PPC. And then Padme says, so we will get insights to help us create better assets, right? And then Anakin gives her a glance like she's kind of crazy if you're watching Jess Bud just gave it to me. (laughs) And then Padme said, so will we get insights to help us create better assets, right? Wait, did I read it wrong? (laughs) No, you got it right. You got it right, sort of. Yeah. Mostly. People understand. <laughs> I'm They've sorry, seen PBC the meme. Kirk. I totally ruined it. They've seen the meme. The point is, PBC Kirk is right. Yes. Per usual. And he really makes you think. It. The point of the, the matter with this is that it is very sad and disparaging to the fact that we aren't doing as much marketing anymore. You know, you've got RSAs. We talked about this nonstop. Last week, they came out with the 28-page PDF talking about RSAs. You, it, it's harder. if It's not impossible, but it's so hard to get ETAs to, to show. It's like RSAs, it's a crappy version of an ad. I'm not to step on your thunder, but SMX Advanced, next week, go sign up. RDAs, a lot of them suck. It's not good marketing. It's easy marketing. 
but it's not good. Nobody look at this stuff and be like, that right there <laughs> is great. And it's like, you're just trying to play towards what Google wants you to do. And like right now, Google wants broad with, you know, smart bidding to work. And you have to have to go play to do that. In reality, it would be better to market to the people that are searching for something exactly, hitting them with the exact message, sending them to the exact landing page, and being able to do real marketing. And what we're doing now is like, all right, how do we best put inputs into the machine in order to get the best results? And it's like, I agree wholeheartedly with Kirk that this takes away a lot of the marketing and you just try to tread water against the machine. And you get worse results. If you pin all your RSAs, you're not going to have good results. Like it's just. It's not fair. It's sad, but that's what they want. So there it goes. Maybe Apple will be different. I pray that that's the case. I don't know about that. I'm kind of scared. Okay. Maybe Yep will be different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Tales from PPC Reddit from user Vino Rus Rosso 96. Switch from Smart Shopping to Performance Max. So this person switched their campaign from Smart Shopping to PMAX in the first seven days. I'm sorry. The PMAX campaign had 11 conversions in the same time period where the Smart Shopping one had 40. And they're like, is this normal? Maybe this is something everyone should be thinking about as they're making the migration. There's nothing in here about if they did the one-click upgrade because Google says if you do the one-click upgrade, you click your data and it shouldn't be as big of an impact of performance. Um, but everyone has to make the switch soon. So, Can I give a little advice to Vino Rosso 96 right here? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You've only had seven days of Pmax, right? Like I get it with smart shopping. You had everything working, 40 conversions in seven days. You've only had 11 now. You need to understand that Google is telling you you must run Pmax for four to six weeks before you make adjustments. So what I am telling you, you should listen to Google, Vino, and you should spend the $33,000 in $33,600 in order for PMAX to get smart enough to work. That's what you need to do. That's what they tell you to do. And actually, don't do that, Vino. Don't use don't do PMAX. That. Don't, like, use standard shopping, use discovery, use whatever you have to do, but don't do what they say, because that's ridiculous. You're spending $800 a day, and they're saying you gotta wait four to six weeks. Obviously, I use six weeks here, but that is almost $34,000 so in order for the algorithm to work. And there was a recent uh, PPC chat, and I asked Ginny that. I'm like, with Performance Max, is there any way that they can performance fast to the max or something like that? Julie actually asked the question. It was great. And Ginny said they're working on it. It was very robotic. Mm. Don't think <laughs> it's sad. Very sad. And I don't know if this is sad or not, but to close out paid, Microsoft Advertising announced that they have completed the acquisition of Xander. They said they are excited to combine our audience understanding technology and global advertising customer base with Xander's data-driven platforms for digital advertising solutions. Wait, they, wait, wait. Cut, cut, cut. That's not how you say it. It's oh. X and R. It is? No. <laughs> <laughs> Then they have this nice graphic of like, who do you think is Microsoft and who do you think is XNR in that picture? Neither. <laughs> it's a stock photo. Oh, Jess, really? Just no, I think, I think the guy with the sweater shirt, that's a Xander for you. Yeah. He's not even shaking hands. I know, but look how happy that fella is. He's just too good to shake Thanks hands. He has to let his associate do it for him. <laughs> Deal <laughs> acquired. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening in organic? All right, so from Barry Schwartz over on Search Engine Roundtable and at Rusty Brick on Twitter, he says they recently spotted Google testing search bar navigation on the left-hand side, and now Google is testing different search filters on the left side bar. This news comes from Ryan Muse, who has a video of this on Twitter saying, I was just thrown into the facet style filter test in the SERP. Ryan Muse? More like Ryan News. 
I thought you already made that joke. He didn't. He just <laughs> suggested they might rhyme. <laughs> anyway, he had these motocross helmets that he was searching for. And you can see these filter by on the very left rail. You can, in his example that he put on Twitter, you could click on for kids. And when you did that, the results would only show youth and kids results. Is actually pretty impressive. And I would imagine that that uses some sort of, uh, of basically structured data and markup in order to do it because it wasn't just products. It was actual uh, websites. So um, again, th this is another reason just to make sure that your structured data markups is on point. But pretty interesting. Head over to Search Engine Roundtable to see that. And wear a helmet. Yeah, Jess. <laughs> Except for that one mile. We'll make that happen. <laughs> All right, and from Glenn Gabe, and I saw that that's where I spotted this article. It was actually a great article from onlineownership.com. If you're using WooCommerce, you can now connect your Google business profile in WooCommerce. And Google has a little update that shows that they're pushing for that. To do it, you have to go to the connected websites, WordPress login, and you need to look for the Google listing and ads plugin for WooCommerce. I thought the write up of this was phenomenal from onlineownership.com. At one point in the article, they said, breaks on. And this is where I stopped. Whilst uploading, I was going through documentation and came across this. Once you link an existing account to connect your store, your shopping ads and free listings will stop running. You'll need to re-upload your feed and product data in order to run shopping ads and show free listings. So this is an overwrite if you already have ads or free listings. So mm -hmm. this should only be used if it's new, basically. So don't go out there and just click on those those buttons there. All right, next up, there's now behavioral modeling for consent mode. That's a mouthful mm -hmm. for analytics. And essentially, if a user declines analytics cookies, they will experience data loss, obviously. And it's going to be proportional to the amount of users that decline that. So what Google is trying, they're basically saying like, hey, your daily active users aren't going to be correct. Um, your new users from a campaign won't be correct. So they're going to try to fill that gap by modeling the behavior of current users to fill in the users that declined everything and, and basically like backfill stuff. So... They say, without modeling, you have a less complete understanding of user behavior on your site based only on the observed data you have available. I completely agree with that. You have less understanding because you have less data, but at least it's accurate data, right? Like, yeah. the data, like, I appreciate the attempt here, but like, you're going to make a fake conversion for a fake dollar? Like, there's something to having a real data, even if it's not the full picture and not some sampled model data. You'd be like, oh, you know what? This was probably $1,000 or something. I don't know. I, I'm always a little bit dubious too because they're the ones pulling the strings and, you know, oh, wow, surprising that ads worked so well and other mm. things. I, I don't know. That's just me being a skeptic. I also just like real data, not faux data. Google also has three new travel products for hotels. One of them is supporting industry protocols, which really isn't a product. Another one is you can upload things without spreadsheets. And then there's uh, open access to hotel ads, so you won't need to use Hotel Center. And you can see that over on Search Engine Land by, as you said, the fabulous new Nicole Farley over there. Thank you for the sleep, Nicole. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and from Glenn Gabe, his thread on the May 2020 core update is just ongoing and it is a must follow if you are into SEO. He's going through all the different fallouts from the recent core update and it's now full of surges and big tremors, some of which which happened on June 5th. Oddly enough, Glenn has an example of a site that rose quickly and then dropped with those tremors that kind of looks exactly like the backdrop of the 1990s film Tremors when Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward were pole vaulting across the rocks of Nevada. Does that really Nevada? happen? You've never seen Tremors? Why would I see that? That's oh. the one with the worms in the ground, right? Oh, I thought you My saw gosh. it. My gosh. I saw it as a child. Shouldn't have. Blocked it out. The core update was a big one, and so was Tremors, honestly. Okay. Shut up. You've never seen Tremors. And Fred Ward. Neither He's has Jess. Fred Ward. I saw it as a the child. The main woman, her name is Finn, his first name. 
As a first name? It's like Finn Carter or something. Wow. Yes. I think she turned into a drug addict, though. Oh, no. Oh. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> go check it out. Follow Glenn Gabe. Pause whatever you're doing at Glenn Gabe on Twitter. Pause whatever you're doing and watch Tremors for <laughs> no, historical context. No, fin finish yeah. the show. <laughs> that takes like uh, an hour and 45 minutes. You'll Maybe never get it back. Some say the best hour and 45 minutes of your life. Oh, I just ruined that <laughs> by saying the opposite. <laughs> they haven't seen the first hour and 45 minutes of Oops All Had. That's they very should. true, Shep. They should. Buffalo.marketingclock.com. All right, and from Barry Schwartz, Google said the core update for May 2020 is not done yet as of Wednesday, and Barry also said it doesn't look done yet, but today is day 14 <laughs> and it should be done soon. We are going to have a boatload of charts for you next week, and I am so excited about mm -hmm. that. Also from Barry Schwartz, also can be found on buffalo.marketingclock.com doing an Oops All Heck episode. Google is hinting that useful nofollow links won't pass much or any weight. If you recall, nofollow never passed any value according to Google up until 2019. Then they said it's a directive and is a hint. So Danny Sullivan, the search liaison of Google on his at Danny Sullivan handle, responded to a tweet and said, in the past, as the post explains, we wouldn't just use the links at all. The change meant we'd consider them if there was some usefulness to be found. Though the hint means they aren't likely to give them as much, if any, weight. Perfect. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, next story from Andrea Cruz, also found at buffalo.marketingclock.com. You can hey. get the show for a dollar and I'll turn it to $2 and go to those in need here in Buffalo. She says, I don't like this. Your Google Docs can now be searchable. It literally says can find in search results. Does that mean it will be indexed? And in your Google Docs, you can now see if something is searchable that can be found in the search results, or you have, can click it to say must have link to access. So if you have sensitive material, if you've got something that can't get out there, you should go back through and make sure that it is not clicked to be searchable. This is a terrible feature. Y'all are going to find all my lists for our shooting the heck games. I keep them in a Google Doc. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal those. Don't you Google it. That's insane. This is insane. Oh, oh. Oh, it's gonna ruin. It's gonna ruin what's coming. <laughs> we record shoot that ahead of time. Okay, and from Barry Schwartz and Glenn Gabe, Google is showing short videos more prominently in Discover than visual web stories. Barry said it's no shocker here. Actually, it's a shocker to me. I thought that they're really trying to push web stories. For all the heck I give stories, stories is still a very interesting way that you can display information. And it seemed like they put a lot of resources in, into it, but now it appears that there's many more of these short videos and it looks like it's TikTok, Facebook, and obviously there's going to be YouTube shorts. Glenn said, is the accordion the first move to de-emphasize visual stories? Will Google just replace stories with short videos? Mm -hmm. The latest web stories I have visited via Discover have been, well, dot, 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 less than impressive. Short videos are booming. Should be interesting to follow. I, I agree. I use Discover every day. The stories that come through are trash. People aren't making stories. And the only reason people are making shorts is because Google's trying to pay them and try to give visibility. I like web stories more than shorts, which I've never thought I would say, but that's what it is. And that's it for organic. What's happening in social, bud? All right, first up in social this week, Meta says that audio and video calling with Messenger has grown with over 40% more daily callers in the app now compared to early 2020. I would never even think to make a call with the thing, but people are using it. So many are doing so that they've actually made it easier to do so. So in addition to chat, people, and stories, they're adding a new calls tab to the menu in Messenger. So get excited. Do you know one of the nice things about this is you can do? What's that? If you are on this, I believe that you could call somebody that has a meta portal. <laughs> you just wanted to say portal. It's been a minute. <laughs> it has. I appreciate it. Don't call me. All right. Control freaks rejoice. Instagram has announced earlier this week they are launching the ability to pin not one, not two, but up to three posts to the top of your profile grid, which I thought was an interesting move because Instagram doesn't seem to really care about photo posts, but you can pin reels as well. 
Well, that makes sense. But I do think this is really great for brands and users too. But if you're really active on the platform and you're posting a lot and you want to keep something surface that's really important and maybe, you know, lasts for a while, like say you have an event you're promoting or something like that and you don't want to just like bury it by posting, it's a good idea. You could do one of your like weird food picks. I should just pin. You haven't done one of those in a while. My dad has though. <laughs> I will get the images and we can put them in the video. If you want to see blurry ravioli, <laughs> <laughs> follow my father. I've been waiting my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Google Alert, a new feature is rolling out to Twitter that will let users opt in to notifications about tweets containing specific terms. Get it? Google Alert joke? What's the Google part? Google alert. alert. It's like, it's a Google alert for Twitter, <laughs> essentially. Uh, the feature was discovered in a pre-release version of the Twitter mobile app. Isn't it just and an alert alert? It's an alert, but it was a Google <laughs> alert joke. Way to ruin the joke, Chef. It's not funny. She can do whatever she wants. <laughs> <laughs> I love Greg's Google alerts for the word Chef that are always about Southern charm. <laughs> <laughs> I sent them all to you, though. <laughs> Anything about that sheep from the Blippi uh, live musical? Mm, surprisingly, no. Not There's yet. a whole skit about a sheep called Shep that gets lost looking for the stars. It's beautiful. Oh, Shep. All right. Uh, from social media today, Pinterest has acquired the Yes, which is an AI-powered shopping platform that learns user preferences in order to provide more personalized matches for said users. You could see why this makes total sense for Pinterest. They're working so hard at being better, and I'm just here for it. They're really pinning our life. Greg gave me that face from the Anakin meme that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> he thinks I'm funny. Uh, from Dan McCormick at Dan yes. McCormick13 on Twitter. Meta just named longtime COO Sheryl Sandberg's number two as her replacement. His name is Javier Olivan, and if you advertise online, he just became very important to you. Here's what I know about him, and it's a thread. Some takeaways, he's a made of veteran. He joined the company in 2007, so he's been there for a long time. Spent his entire career in growth-related roles, as um, most recently as the chief growth officer, or CGO. And apparently he's maniacally data-driven. He's a CGO. I wonder if he knows Jill Fetcher from <laughs> Agency Scoop. Those CGOs <laughs> tend to stick together. That they do. <laughs> he's also from Spain and he spent some time in telecom if you want some more about his life. But Dan's got theories on the challenges that he's inheriting and how he might tackle them. So if you need some light beach reading, you could check it out. I think the data driven thing is interesting. We'll see. <laughs> Not if we're launching basic ad Everyone platforms. Everyone just puts that on their resume. You know what? I really wanted to read this, but I feel like in a few months, I'm going to go to a beach. And since you said if I need beach reading, like I'm going to save that for the beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who would read this break. on a beach? You got to print it out because the glare would be too much on the beach. Yeah, or you could just bring your laptop and hold it close with those plates. Are you getting transitions? No, I can't do it. I got Why? new sunglasses. Oh. Because for all the reasons I have listed. lots of reasons. I just, I need, I need to be positive. You're going to wear those new sunglasses? I feel like transitions are going to lower my PER, PER. It's a nice shirt you have on What's today. What's PER? You. Player effective efficiency ratio. Right. Mm. Yeah. I feel like it's going <laughs> to decrease my stack. I feel like mine just went to zero because I didn't get that. All right. From Chris Ridley via Discord, Chris says, just seeing this on Insta, have any other accounts had the Reels incentives seemingly disappear from their dashboard? And then he says this is not his account, just one that he follows. He shared a screenshot with some swearing in it, and this is what, Brave? It's Brave and Sleeping Beauty. What program is this? I want to watch it. I don't know, but, but it's that like can't different be an animation quote. style. Yeah. No, it's not an exact quote <laughs> from the Disney show. She's a nice lady. I don't know. <laughs> I could barely read the thing. I was going to do an accent and then I decided not to. But anyway, the point is the caption on this image. It says, hey, friends, I'm asking for help. I'm paraphrasing. I was posting reels because Instagram offered a bonus. They even had a section on my creator dashboard that let me see how much I was earning. Basically an incentive to keep posting reels. I wouldn't have posted any of them if they didn't offer me money. Yesterday, the bonus disappeared with no payout. That's terrible if that's true. I've seen this. In other locations. That's insane and mean. And if you don't do reels, you have you, it, you might as well be an ETA. <laughs> I understand that, but that's fine for free. You don't promise people money and not give it to them. 
ETA not okay. All right, next up, that was like a okay. Oh, I got it. Just it makes it worse when you try to explain it. (laughs) I personally think it makes it better. (laughs) I hate this part right here. All right. Uh, from TechCrunch, the link and bio platform Linktree is launching a new one-stop directory for users to browse its platform partners and integrations. The company says the new hub called Linktree Marketplace is designed to drive exposure to its partnerships. Oh, I think that's nice. I don't know if anyone's going to use it though. TikTok is launching digital avatars for use in clips. And Andrew Hutchinson, I know you're not listening, but I hate the sentence. He says, in the near future, digital avatars will become a critical representation of our real selves as we interact more and more in wholly virtual spaces. Blech. He's probably right, though. And the good news is TikTok did a much better job with their avatar creation tool than Bitmoji did with Greg. <laughs> so. Hey, was it bad? It's pretty bad. Doesn't reflect you. Similar shirt, I suppose. Okay. Speaking of Bitmoji, cool news for restaurants. Snapchat is adding a new map layer in partnership with the Infatuation that will provide restaurant recommendations to users in New York, LA, Chicago, and a whole bunch of other cities. You'll then be able to share it with friends or add it to favorites for later. In addition, users will now automatically see reviews from the infatua- infatuation, pardon me, in place profiles in more than 50 cities around the world. So if your reviews are good, that's great. If they're not, sorry, Charlie. Instagram is expanding its sensitive content controls beyond the Explore tab. According to TechCrunch, they will soon apply to search, reels, hashtag pages, accounts you might follow, and in-feed suggested posts. So these changes are coming soon i'm worried about the ravioli oh no 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 everyone wants that it's not sensitive in any way it's blurred <laughs> pre-blurred 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 for you i sent it to my brother and he goes oh the phone must have been moving so much during that photo <laughs> i just picture my dad having a lot of wine and eating italian food it's nice my dad has epic food posts still you will see them if you watch us all right news we can all use Instagram has apparently increased the username character limit from 30 to 64 characters. And the example here from Ryan Freely via Matt Navarra is like whatever you type (laughs) on your keyboard just to see if you can hit a limit. Whatever. But the nugget here is that you can only change your name twice within 14 days. I didn't really know that was a thing, but I guess it seems like it should be a thing. Yeah, at least they just let you try again after 14 days if you're not happy. Mm-hmm. Whatever, something good to know. All right, did we ever talk about TweetDeck's Mac, Mac app going away on July 1st? Uh, it's not ringing not. a bell. Yeah, I don't know if we did, but it, it doesn't matter. The point is, A, that's happening, and B, if that news is just shattering your world, Apple Insider has a list of great alternatives. So get the link. And to close this out here, shots fired. From Matt Navarra, he says, TikTok is throwing shade at Instagram influencers. And he cites something. I'll, he just like screenshots You can't something. read that? I can't read the source. The source says it's a TikTok marketing science global creators like me study from 2021 conduct, conducted by, it looks like HubSpot, but there's no way that's what that says. Anyway, um, the information being cited from said source says influencers on competitor platforms are now more likely to be seen as show-offs or disingenuous compared to creators on TikTok. And just to set set the table here, that's all fantastic. No, it's not. We have people now. You probably don't know because you're not on Twitter. No. They screen cap Sarah Steeman, recaps and screenshots you holding your computer to your face she does. and posts it every I time. I love her I so it. much. She's so nice. Thank She's you. She's the greatest. Yeah. Don't send them to my optometrist, please. (laughs) That's it. I'm done. My eyes hurt. And that brings us to our real life segment, straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for working hard or hardly working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. I had a client setting up a new Microsoft advertising account this week. They're already on Google and we encourage them to try Microsoft and it wouldn't let them create an account without making a campaign. Mm -hmm. So she had to make a campaign and with me on screen share because she was like, this seems kind of sketchy. And I was like, 
I guess just make it and we'll show I'll show you how to pause it right away and it like auto generated the ads and everything and it's just like what I've seen in Google where they have that smart mode like you set it up and I have no idea what I'm looking at and then you have to find a tiny button to switch to expert mode aka normal mode I don't know what the world is coming to ridiculous they should put Microsoft clarity on the account creation process <laughs> it's on the UET tag setup <laughs> rage fix AI I know. All right. And for me, something working hard is in Google Docs, you can change the layout to not include pages, which is a game changer. We have so many reports and you have like the ability to have just one scrolling file is unbelievable. This show runs off of a Google Doc and to not have to have those little jumps is huge. Oh man, wait, I didn't even think about how we're always accidentally adding headers and footers. I know, oh. it's going to be amazing. So we did, this is the first time I did it. It pertains to the entire doc, not just to the user level. The only gripe I have is like every time you scroll more than once, it makes it seem like there's another page. Like it our definitely has page numbers in the scroll bar. So. I know you scroll twice, and it looks like our show is 103 pages, but it can't look, scroll scroll down and see. What, no, hmm. it says 48. It says 53. But see, so it must be at the user level because when I scroll with my mouse, it says 103. Is it because you're zoomed in? I don't know. Well, That's the only gripe I have, but it's pretty fantastic that you can do this and have one big doc. I zoom in, and my page numbers go up. So just some experimentation on the fly for you. Seems helpful if you're like trying to reference a section, but there's that nice little like con table of contents inside. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's good. We're enjoying it here. Um, I've talked about this a lot in real life. I don't think I've talked about it on the show. The ability to group tabs in Chrome is just so helpful and it keeps me organized. And every time Greg Finn comes to my desk, he talks about how jealous he is that he's not so organized and it's really easy to do. I, you just right click on the tab and add to a group, but he hasn't done it yet. I just don't know how to group things. I need you to help me. I'm with you. By client? Then what folders. about when you need something in the other window? In the other, it's, you just put not, it over there. Similar. It's fine. We'll talk about it later. Whatever. It's working hard for me. Some people clearly don't like it. We should have a Discord uh, 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 DIY. We should, but I'd have to be in Discord for that. <laughs> True. True facts. <laughs> and now for this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. And is really, really cool. All right, this week's Cool Tool is a quick trick, courtesy of the one and only PPC Greg. Oh, from buffalo.marketingclock.com, the charity show where every dollar you put in, we match up to $5,000 that goes 100% to the victims of the Buffalo shooting. And the next time you are snooping around the SERPs for competitor ads, think about Mr. PPC Greg and click on those three gray dots that are kind of like the traffic light to open the about this ad panel. There's information about the ad itself as well as advertiser details in some of them. And then there's a nice little link in some of those that says see more ads by this advertiser. You can see text ads image ads and video ads. It is pretty cool. There's been some back and forth on Twitter about whether it's showing up for all advertisers or what country you're in. And it, it, we don't know for sure who it's actually applying to, but PPC Greg spotted it in the wild and shared screenshots of it. I was able to replicate it as well. It's really awesome. It is worth the extra click just to see if it's there when you're doing competitor research or in need of creative inspiration. So if you're watching us, we'll have screenshots up on the screen. And if not, we will have the link in our newsletter as well as on Discord. So pick your poison and check it out. Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from Brody Clark. And it's called Google Image Thumbnails for Organic Results. What they are, how they work, and will SEO help? <laughs> and Brody has a fantastic article. The best article I've seen on this. He talks about the history of image thumbnails in Google Search, the different types, how to qualify image thumbnail issues, what research shows, the key takeaways, and a whole bunch of FAQs. So if you don't have image Images in your organic results. Brody has everything you need to know about what you can do. Thank you, Brody. 
And now on to our playlist of curated songs to work to. You can head over to playlist.marketingaclock.com to listen to Marketing a Playlist. I was doing some research today for Shootin' the Heck and found myself listening to one of the best songs in the history of the world, Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. So that is what's going on for me. Wow. Greg? (laughs) All right. I have a song that I can't stop listening to. It's called Delete Forever by Grimes. That was your pick last, last week. week. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> Which, by the way, I listened to it, and it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's good. Oh, great. I listened to it four times a day. I can't stop. I've listened to it two times today already, and probably three times yesterday. So, so I'm going to go with another song off that album, You'll Miss Me When I'm Not Around by Grimes. Chef, do you want to know what I picked? Yeah. Oh. I invite you to share your selection. I don't know how the people are going to feel about this, but... This just really hit home on my commute this morning. Crush, Crush, Crush by Paramore. Nice. All right, that does it for today's show. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. If you're looking for more information on today's topic, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we covered. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. Welcome to this week's Shooting the Hack. We're after our famous Friday news show. We don't talk about marketing anymore. We just shoot the hack. Today we are playing everyone's favorite game. It's a draft of things that make you feel alive. Yeah. What inspired this again? Well, is it going to be a pick? It's going to be one okay. of the picks that Je- Jess and I are going to fight over probably. But we do this. <laughs> we have this ritual at lunch, and it makes you feel alive. Okay. Like, like at the core. Like so you can go first. Awaken. Are you going to pick it? I mean, I kind of have to. You have to. You want me to save it for you? Do you no, want no, you take it. I okay. purposely built my list around not having it. I didn't even have it on my list, but yeah. I feel like we need to have it. It's eating super hot hot sauce. It goes through your body, mm-hmm. and you can feel it pulsing through your cells, and it warms you up, and it puts a little warm tingle up your spine, and you feel absolutely alive this conversation is making me lightheaded yes also yes. That, you get like euphoric yes. and so we, you have this i mean it is like it, it is one step down from the bomb on how hot some of the stuff that we eat is but yeah. it's like you take this in and you just you feel like you know what <laughs> i am here right now yeah. i didn't know if i was i am here yeah you're aware of yourself and your being and everything seems okay in that moment. Yes. You're just like <laughs> alive. You feel alive. It's the best. It is the I best. Just bring so much joy to me. Yeah. We've been eating peppers that do it. Wowzers. What Wowzers, are they called? Wowzers. Yeah. Highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> eating them raw. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Um, okay, I'll go next. I feel alive when I'm on a roller coaster. Ah, that was, Ooh, my, that was gonna be my number one. And I'm re- I get to go on my trip soon. And I'm so excited because it's been like pre-pandemic, pre-baby. I haven't had that like rush, that adrenaline rush. So I'm really excited. I love like the feeling in your stomach. I just love roller coasters. Yeah, I had that on my list too, specifically when you're in the back and you get like pulled mm-hmm. over that first hill. Oh, I'm so jealous. And just like you're scared even though you know it's going to be okay. Like such a You never feeling. know that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jess, what do you have? <laughs> um, I'm going to go with the getting tattooed. Ooh. Like that feeling of the needle. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I want it now. It, like <laughs> it just feels so good. Like it hurts so good. It's like the pain. I, I don't know. I have a high t- pain tolerance, I think. So it might be different for other people. Some people might hate it. But it is just such a nice, like soothing, constant, rhythmic, pain and then when it's over you get this like amazing throbbing after because your skin is just like i don't think i would like that. it's phenomenal it is such it's a unique feeling and it's got that buzz that comes with it like the literal audio buzz and the life height like it it just highly recommend i need tattoos so there's no spot where you're like that hurt too much i wouldn't do it again no never some of them hurt more than others and hurt a lot but like i don't take it back it's part of the experience i got sunburned this weekend i was like this hurts this feels (laughs) kind of good right? <laughs> yeah, yeah that right. burn feels good yes 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 yeah we need to have you sit in greg's seat so people can see your tattoos for the summer serpentine <laughs> what do you have next Ooh, um picklebacks they're so exciting <laughs> 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 they're such a ride they're a roller coaster of a beverage love what there is, is a pickleback for people okay. that don't know oh okay so it's a, a 
pickle back or a pickle front, depending on the order you do it. But you have two shots. One is whiskey and one is pickle juice. And if you want to take it to the next level, you use the juice of spicy pickles. So spicy picklebacks. You're supposed to do the pickle at the end, but change it up sometime. It's There's a thrill. Nothing about that. That's for me. It's such a journey. It's great. You should feel alive. Okay. My next answer, what makes me feel alive, it's just an amazing Taylor Swift bridge in a song. <laughs> Cruel Summer's the best one. <laughs> what? Just her bridges. Right. Like her teeth? <laughs> no! <laughs> it's the part of the song that... I, like the opposite of planking? <laughs> no! Oh. You're just messing with me because you want me to say the wrong thing. It's the part of the song like towards the end when she like changes up the rhythm. Can you sing it for me? I'm drunk in the back of the car and I cry like a baby coming home from the bar. It's the best part. Weird. I just felt like I was dead right there. (laughs) (laughs) You guys don't know what you're missing out on. Okay. It's on me next. My second pick is going to be when you're playing basketball. You shoot a shot and it just feels so good. And you're like, that is nothing but that. That's a swish. And then you watch it go through and it's just wet. Just a swish. Boom. No rim. Nothing. But when you feel it the whole way and you're like, that was it. And then it goes in and it's just a swish. Unbelievable feeling. You feel extra. You feel more like godly when that Mm. happens. Unbelievable. Jess is nodding. She has no idea. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it done. Never I've never felt it. In my life. Mm. Okay, this is just a weird one, and it, it it's just going super fast. If you're doing anything and you're going super fast, you feel alive. Like I understand why people. I don't go super fast a lot, <laughs> but like if you're skiing or whatever, and you're going super fast or you're dry. When if you're super fast, you feel alive. You have to. That's kind of, you just stole a bunch of answers. You could do whatever. Skiing could have been one. Skiing is on my list too, but that, that, that. It's separate. That, that's different. Okay. Going super fast by any kind of vehicle, any, anywhere. What if you're reading super fast? No. You don't, you're, you're not feeling anything. You're reading. You're listening. The news today is. (laughs) Okay. My next answer is riding a bike. I love riding bikes. I have my whole life. I like to do like cool tricks on them. I've never had one with handlebar brakes. Love it. I will say, though, going downhill on a bike Mm -hmm. is extra alive. Mm -hmm. Like when you go downhill and you're like, look at this magic. It's gravity, baby. Anytime you can take your feet off and you're just going. You definitely feel alive. Yeah. Especially because you just like work so hard to get up the hill. (laughs) It's the best. I love riding bikes. Jess. Um, Your last two. My last two. Okay scalding hot showers i had this one too that's great mm-hmm. it's the best oh my god like almost burning your flesh like just yes. feeling in that moment and you're alone and you're just experiencing something it's well, great. not shep she's with peacock oh yeah she she's watching tv <laughs> while she's in there but no i just i love a hot, hot yeah hot and i need it in the morning like even if i shower at night yeah i don't care how hot it is outside how hot it is in the house doesn't matter yeah can i go counter to that yeah have you ever taken a insanely cold shower no. you feel you feel alive though <laughs> now you're going to. i'm gonna try <laughs> <laughs> for sure um oh shoot okay i get one more mm-hmm. there uh, okay there's just i feel like the audience can relate to this one there is a feeling when you're on an airplane and it's that moment when it lifts off the ground and you just like feel that and you've lost the control. You, that, no, I, I, I exactly. You feel it's like, so alive. It's out of your hands. Yep. Like it's gone. That like You're up. Mm-hmm. Totally, I totally relate that to that. That little feeling in the pit of your stomach like you yep. were rolling and now you're not. Great. Yep. It's a great time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I hate that you're like in a little box though. I hate it. I mean... <laughs> That one. And this is my list, not yours. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> my last one, right, will be. This is going to be unique to me too. Mm-hmm. I love a good wedding dance floor. I just have like an out of body experience every time I start doing like tricks, singing the songs. I'm just like that. Even myself, I'm at my peak self. I'm my most alive at a wedding on a dance floor. 
that's terrifying to me, but I've seen you <laughs> yes. do that. It, very, yes. very her. Yes. <laughs> yes. I wish I was that free. <laughs> okay. My last one is going to sound bad, but when you have a first sip of Jack Daniels, <sighs> but it's like only that drink, like that drink, again, it kind of like warms your spine up a little bit there. Unlike anything else. He's my favorite guy. That would be and red just, wine for me. It just, but it like resonates through through your body, like all the way up. And then after that, it's not as much, but it's that first sip of Jack Daniels. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we're all done, right? Yes. Yeah. Greg, what's your list? Hot sauce. Super hot, hot sauce, scalding. Second off, I've got shooting a perfect shot that you think is going to be a swish, and it actually swishes. The third is just going super fast. <laughs> the fourth is the first sip of a Jack Daniels drink. Okay, and I have roller coasters. Anytime Taylor Allison Swift sings a bridge, um, riding a bike, and dancing at a wedding. And I have getting tattooed, picklebacks, scalding hot showers, and that moment of takeoff on an airplane. Okay, well, we're, we're feeling alive. We hope you are too. <laughs> Let us know who won. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Did you seriously make it all the way through that episode of Marketing O'Clock? Good for you. If you're looking for more content, there is a lot more where that came from. So click to watch our latest episode with plenty of digital marketing news and hot takes. Also, please subscribe to our show and like this episode because my job depends on it.